Welcome to No Border Blues with Johnny Bergen and Stephanie Tice, a podcast about international blues artists you should know about and the sometimes surprising hidden blues scenes around the world. Johnny is a Delmark recording artist who regularly tours and collaborates with international blues players. And Stephanie recently produced the No Border Blues Japan CD, the first American compilation of the underground Japanese blues scene. This show is sponsored by Chicago Blues Network, bringing Chicago blues to the world. Welcome to No Border Blues, international blues artists you should know about. I've got one of my favorite guitar players with us here today, Ronnie Boyson of Denmark. Ronnie, welcome. Great to, glad to have you here. Hi, Ronnie. Thanks for having me. It's an honor. I'm a big fan of yours. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, you know, you've been around since the, uh, since the early 90s, right? Yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, you've had a long career playing with uh, all kinds of people. And uh, why don't you tell us, how did you get started with this music? Uh, when I was a kid, I went to uh, not a boarding school, but a school where you stay, you stay at the school. Mm -hmm. And there was a guy who played guitar there and he was into uh, Cream and Clapton and the Hendrix and stuff like that. And there was something about it that I really liked, uh, something about the music that I really liked. Yeah. Other parts I didn't really like. <laughs> So I started going to the library to, you know, just borrowed records to find out what it was, you know, borrowed all kinds of music, Irish music and Mongolian throat singing and all kinds of stuff, you know, <laughs> just cool. to figure out what I really liked, you know. And uh, <clears throat> at some point I went to a, a friend of mine's house. His dad had a record room. He had lots of records and CDs and he put on a Muddy Waters album hard again and as soon as i heard that it was just whoa that's it you know so it was like this is what i've been looking for kind of thing this is what i've been looking for yeah so i, I think we heard it five times that night and then I, I took it home with me and we fell asleep listening to it and woke up and heard it again the next day and just whoa this is it so i went to the library and found out it was called blues so i borrowed all the blues <laughs> albums <laughs> brought it all home and just started listening you know <laughs> And um, yeah, that's that's how I got into it. Yeah. So when was your first um, guitar lesson, and who did did you learn from anyone there, or did you just self learn? Or um, I learned a few licks from this guy at the school. I remember the uh, uh, what's it called, Rolling Stone, the Muddy Waters lick. I went Rolling Stone. Yeah. And I played it all over and over and drove everybody crazy. <laughs> I, ne I never had any lessons. I've, I've been listening to records yeah. and just learning from records. <clears throat> but the town where I used to live in, in Aarhus, um, there was a great music scene in the, the 90s. There was uh, maybe four jam sessions every week and blues bands playing every weekend. There's a group of people my age <clears throat> got together and learned from each other and Hey, check this guy out. His Johnny Guitar Watson. Oh, you know. So we learned from each other and stole from each other. And yeah, it was about five or six of us. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Did you have stage fright when you started playing? Uh, no. No, I don't think I did. 
I've watched a lot of uh, YouTube clips, and and I haven't seen you sing. So do you do you sing on your recordings too? No, I don't. Okay, you're a guitar. I player. don't. I, yeah, I like to be a side man. I like to be on the side. I don't like to be the center of focus. You know. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I like to I like I like to back up harmonica players mainly. I, that's what I really like. If I should start over, I'd pr probably play harmonica. Oh. That's what I love. I love to hear harmonica. I love to back up harmonica players. Well, lots of great guitar players are pretty good harp players, like Lewis Myers and so on. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I never had the time to sit down and and learn it. <laughs> you played with some great harp players. I mean, you played with uh, R. J. Michaud, James Harmon, Peter Nand. Yeah. How do you, yeah. is it Peter Nand? Nende. 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 Yeah, Nende. Yeah, yeah. he's really, he's really <clears throat> good. Um, Lazy Lester. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got to meet all these people through uh, Peter Nende. He's, uh, he's a good harmonica player and a great singer, great front man. And he's the kind of guy who, uh, he's an entrepreneur, you know, he, he uh, when he listens to a record, he, you go, I like this guy, you know, let me call him, set up a tour right. for him, you know, and, <laughs> you know, and a month right. later, he's got a tour together for, you know, he makes sort of that sort of thing happen all the time. <clears throat> so he called uh, <clears throat> RJ Micho and he came over and we backed him and uh, Gary Primich and Lacey Lester. What an experience that was. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, right. Uh, and it's kind of funny because when you learn from records and then you yeah. play with the people who made the records, but it's not the same yeah. anymore, you know? <laughs> no. Well, is it, with, with Lacey Lester, it was kind of, you know, it was amazing standing on stage and that voice was right there, you know? It the was voice that guy is the singing. same, I've but heard... the arrangements might yeah. not be the same. You yeah, there's that, a, no you arrangements know? whatsoever. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, and, and that fluid. gig, he mostly played uh, country and he wanted to play guitar, you know, he played country and western. So was, and... was Lacey Lester your first country and western gig? Yeah. <laughs> It was a funny gig. I made the mistake of smoking in front of him, and he just scolded me like I was a kid. You know, he, he said, oh. so he, there was a legend, legendary Lacey Lester standing in front of me and yelling at me before the gig. <laughs> <laughs> was, that the gig? Yeah. was that no, on stage? Was that no? No, that was it. No, that was backstage. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then he played all his country and western. It sounded fantastic. It was amazing. Yeah. And uh, but in the break. Peter told him, you know, why, why don't you play the harp, you know, play all these old songs that people came to hear, you know. He said, okay, sure. He played all these old Pixello <laughs> hits, you know. Incredible experience. Nice. And what a great guy he was. Fantastic. Yeah. I did yeah. one show with him. Yeah. At the Chicago Blues Festival, and, and our final <clears throat> song was Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. No one does a better version than him. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. So I guess the, the last band you put together, I mean, you've been in a million bands, um, but yeah. I guess recently you put together um, Los Palmeras. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? I mean, as I understand, it's described as exotica. <laughs> yeah, sort of. <laughs> Latin exotica? Yeah, something like that. It's okay. Music for supermarkets and elevators and strip clubs. <laughs> 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 I've always wanted to make a burlesque hear. record myself, yeah. so one of these yeah. days we have to do something together like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's so much fun. Well, that who came comes about. To, who comes to those kind of shows? What's the audience for for that? Well, we we uh, started that band during the pandemic, so everything was closed, and we had to do something. And uh, <clears throat> these two friends of mine called me up, and they wanted to do sort sort of like uh, you know the uh, Raikuda and uh, what's the guitar player's name? The Cuban guitar player. Uh, I can't remember his name right now, but they wanted to make something Cuban, you know. And I thought, uh -oh. yeah, that'd be fun. And uh, I have nothing else to do, so why not? <clears throat> but I've I've, I've always had this. Uh, I've always loved these cheesy organ music from the '60s, you know. And uh, so I so I found all these old recordings that I wanted to do. Old, uh, uh, what's his name? Lefty Bates and uh, yes, all sorts of stuff like that. Renee Hall and you know more of a jazzy kind of vibe. Right. So I presented this to them and they loved it and we put the band together and 
yeah, came out great. It was a lot of lots of fun. All instrumental band, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah. There's a record coming out uh, soon. It's recorded and mastered. So uh, yeah, it came out really good. Congratulations! Congratulations! Is, yeah. Is yeah, this on Rhythm thanks. Bomb? Say again. Sorry. Is it? Will this record be on Rhythm Bomb Records? No, it'll be a self-release. <clears throat> we haven't tried to uh, uh, get a, a company involved. But Kokomo Kings is on Rhythm Bomb. That's on Rhythm Bomb, yes. You know, so many artists on this podcast are on Rhythm Bomb. Like we had Little Hat, and we yeah. had Jelly Roll Men. Jelly Rolls. And oh, yeah, yeah. Little Victor. Yeah. You know, <laughs> they're a really yeah. neat company, but, you know, I don't know, like, who they are or much about them. Okay. Yeah, it's a German company. They're really busy. They've released a lot of stuff in the last few years. <clears throat> they're uh, doing a lot of rock and roll, and they're into that scene. You know, they know all the festivals in Germany, rock and roll festivals, and that. You know, they're closely connected to that scene. And I suppose the Kokomo Kings have probably played every one of those festivals. Yeah, we have, and it's a lot of fun. And you, you've been in the Kokomo, you were in the Kokomo Kings for about 10 years, right? Yeah, 10 years this year. Yeah. The three records you did are really good. Yes. Amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I, I like the uh, picture of you holding the arrow of the Cupid's bow, you know, <laughs> drive crazy, by, love, by affair, love affair. Right? <laughs> we listened yeah. to that one this morning. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. okay. Yeah, it's fun music. Fun I really music. Like Beautiful uh -huh. work. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it is, that's a lot of fun. It's um, Magnus, the bass player who writes all the songs. He uh, he likes to keep it as simple as possible. You yeah, know, so it's I, if all I, very if, hard boiled. Yeah, and it's all about the rhythm and the groove, and it's music made for dancing. You know, mm -hmm. so if I play a nine chord, he'll give me the look and go, no, 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 no. <laughs> it has to be really simple and to the to the bone. You know. Mm -hmm. Like the but Planet that's, Rockers, that's... Remember, remember them? Sorry? The Planet, do you remember the Planet Rockers? No. Oh, I mean, I felt the same way about their music. It's like they simplified it to its very yeah. essence, you know, and yeah. it was so good that way, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't need a lot, a lot of fancy stuff, but it's a challenge playing that way. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, yeah, I think it worked. I'm Only glad we really have another guitar player. would say that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> because it's a choice you know it's a choice that has to be a consistent choice and then and then it builds its momentum like jimmy Reed, the same thing it just you know exactly it builds yeah. momentum from that yeah and it keeps hitting well, we, that same mood yeah when we first started it the band we wanted to play, make a, a rock and roll band so we could play the rock and roll festivals but play jimmy Reed for young kids you know <laughs> That's what we wanted to do. You know, because it's the, that it's, bands it's, have a it's, goal. That's a great goal. Yeah, it is a great goal. Yeah, because it's a the, the rock and roll scene, especially in Germany and Holland and Belgium, it's it's younger than the blues scene in Scandinavia. It's younger people coming out, you know. So we wanted to um, to play that sort of music for them. Wow. Yeah. So how are things? Um... Are things opening up now? Uh, are there festivals happening in Denmark? Or uh, all the res restrictions were gone uh, last week, I think. Oh, good. So things are opening and opening up again. Mm -hmm. The same in Sweden. They just uh, uh, no more restrictions from yesterday, I think. So yeah, it's opening up again. Right. Yeah, finally. Yeah, yeah, finally. That's that's good to know. Yeah. yeah. So uh. I understand that I, I had not heard of an Ameripolitan award because I'm, I'm really not a, a rockabilly guy, really, although I do enjoy it when it's done well. I love Carl Perkins. I don't know much about You've it. You've got a I've lot of awards. Much. It's <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't heard about that award either. It's apparently it's connected to a festival in Las Vegas, I think. Oh, okay. And they oh. invited us out there, but they wouldn't pay us. So we said, no, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> invitation without pay you know welcome to the music yeah. world right yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
a Merrick Paulton Award. Yeah, well, and then, and the, the one time we played together was in Belgium with Mud Morgan Field. So you've been backing yeah. Mud for a long time, yeah. and uh, yeah, you know, yeah. tell us. I mean, if you if your first blues record was Hard Again by Muddy Waters, and then you're playing with Mud Morgan Field, just just tell us a little bit about that. Well, it just felt like it came full circle, you know. It, now I'm playing with Marty's son, you know. It's, how much more can I ask for? <laughs> that was a through Peter Nende again. Wow. <clears throat> he, uh, Mott had a, a UK band. Right. Uh, right. I think Big Joe Louis was in it. Big Joe Louis, I know you know Big yeah. Joe Louis. He's and, very, uh, very, very good. He's, yeah. I, I, you know, love I love his him. music. I love Yeah, him. me too. Me too. Um, so I think this is 12 years ago. I played with Mott for 12 years and I think, I think Mott played in, in the UK and, and he wanted to go to Scandinavia. So, uh, Big Joe Lewis said, call Peter and Andy and see if he can help you. So right. we brought Mott, Mott over a couple of, of times and, uh, eventually he wanted a, uh, a, a European band, the same band everywhere he went. So he picked different players and I was lucky enough to be his guitar player and yeah, been traveling all over Europe and India and yeah. So who's, who's your favorite guitarist who played with Muddy Waters? Uh, that's a good I'm question. Killing I've, 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 I'm killing yeah, you now. I'm killing you now. No, with the stuff he did with, with Jimmy Rogers, that must be, that must right. be it. Yeah. Okay. For me. Yeah. I love Jimmy Rogers. Yeah. You, <laughs> did you ever see Jimmy Rogers? I saw him twice. Yeah. I was 16 and I was living in Aarhus, which is uh, three hours away from Copenhagen, where I, where I live now. And I saw an ad in the music magazine. Jimmy Rogers was playing at Mojo Blues Bar. And I was 16 years old. So I called him and said, is, is that the Jimmy Rogers who played with Marty Waters? And she said, yes. I said, can I come? I'm 16. She said, yeah, you can come, but no alcohol. <laughs> so I jumped on a train and traveled over there <laughs> and saw Jimmy Rogers. I can't remember who was in the band. Oh, when I came to the door at Mojo, I knocked on the door and they opened up and said, so loud. <laughs> Did they let you they in? Said, no, no, no. I'm the guy who called you. I'm the 16 year old guy who called you for more. And I said, oh yeah, I remember you. Come on in. Oh. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> That would have yeah. been so sad. Yeah, it would. <laughs> that was an incredible experience. Yeah. yeah. So that was the first real blues uh, concert.
Kokomo Kings has a tour coming up in uh, uh, May. Okay. 10, 10, 12 day tour, I think. Oh, yeah. good. Do you, do you like the traveling part of it? No. No? Not anymore. So you used to like it? I used to like it, yeah. Well, we hope to see you in Europe one of these days when we get back into the swing yeah. going over. Yeah. I mean, we've tried a couple times and it's been canceled and we were supposed to be on tour in Japan, but we'll see. Okay. Yeah, it'll be what it yeah. is. You used to play with Paul Orta. Um, was that one of the first American artists that you played with in Europe? That was the first one, yeah. Uh, I can't remember how that came about. I think, do you know a guitar player called Enrico Crivellaro? No. Uh, uh, Italian guy, really good guy. He, he, uh, he recorded with Finest Tespi and all kinds of... Mm -hmm. He used to play with Harmon. He came to a jam session once, you know, many years ago. And I just thought, wow, this guy's great. And he told me he was traveling all over the world and playing with James Harmon and all these kind of bands. And I thought, oh man, I want, I want that. I want to do that. You know, I'll travel the world and play with the real guys, you know. <laughs> so uh, I asked him, can you put me in touch with anybody? And he said, yeah, Paul Otto lived, I think he lived in Germany at that time, or Belgium. And uh, yeah, and he came up and and he was just fantastic. I loved him. Mm. He, he sounded just like Snooky Pryor. <laughs> wow, that's saying a lot there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just loved it. And I remember the first gig we played in uh, at Mojo Blues Bar in Copenhagen. And we'd, we'd gone on, we'd played hour and a half, and we said, you know, we need to take a break. And I said, we, no, we can't. People are dancing. We have to keep playing. Hmm. So I don't I don't remember how long we played, but we just played all night, you know. That's Texas. It, it, That's a Texas thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who needs a break? Let's just keep yeah. going. <laughs> so, so, yeah, he was, he was the first one. And that was great. And then I met uh, Keith Dunn, who's a guy from Boston who lives in uh, Holland. Right. Started playing with him uh, when he was up here. And uh, yeah, and then I met Peter Nende, and then we started playing with RJ and Gary Primich. And yeah. Well, I know uh, was I know that Sven Zettenberg was kind of a mentor to a lot of Scandinavian players. Um, yeah. Did you have you must have had a relationship with him, too, right? Um, I did I did a two week tour with him and Barrel House Chuck. Um, I think it was maybe a year before he died. Wow. Or maybe maybe six months before it was. He died pretty short after that. But uh, yeah, we did one tour with him in Scandinavia and up in Svalbard. Uh, the Dark Season Blues Festival with him and uh, Barrel House Chuck. And he was, he, he could sing and he could play harmonica he could, and the guitar. He was just amazing. And Chuck on on piano, it was some of the best music I've ever been involved in. He was, he was, he was great. Yeah, he's a mentor, really. Nice. And Pep's person. Yeah, yeah, but that's over in Sweden and we don't really... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Steph speaks Norwegian. Yeah, I can speak a very good Norsk. <laughs> oh, this is not perfect. Yeah, I lived there ten years. I better be able to speak. I lived ah, there in Kongsberg. Okay. Kongsberg. Okay. Okay. So Kongsberg. you know the jazz festival and the Norton Blues Festival. I was frequent. I mean, that's where I saw BB King. Um, you know, Chick Corea. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. That was in Norway, you know. Yeah. Good, okay. Good, good things in Norway. Yeah. But so there's comes a lot back, of Norwegian right? Swedish jokes. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a thing. Yeah, we have, <laughs> we have a, your share. We yeah. have our thing yeah. with the. Swedes. Yeah, yeah. So I guess the Mojo Blues Bar. That was like your. That you probably played there hundreds of times. Oh yeah, I lived there for a while in the basement. <laughs> you lived in the basement of Mojo. Oh, now that's a story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just moved to Copenhagen and didn't have a place to stay, so stayed in the basement. <laughs> wow. How long yeah, did you live it, there at Mojo? Uh, just, I don't know, a week or two. Oh, okay. Big, but Joe was, Williams, uh, Big Joe Williams lived in the basement of the Jazz Record Mart in Chicago. So, yeah, oh, really? Okay. Comedy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, from I probably wouldn't have moved to Copenhagen if, if it hadn't been for Mojo. Probably not, because I lo- I used I used to go there every night, yeah, just to hang out or play or hang out with friends. And they they have so many great bands coming through. Yes, they've been around since I think. I think they had their thirty fifth year anniversary, this year maybe, mm-hmm. last year, and they have live music every night. Wow. Every night. Yeah. Well, I played so. there in like 99 or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My, my the yeah. first time that I went to Europe with, with my band. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, that was a long time ago. I thought you played, played there recently. And mm-hmm. I played there recently too. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you? Yeah. And well, nothing has changed. 2019, I would think it was. Yeah. Yeah. 2019. Yeah. So I played there yeah. in 1999 and then 20 years later. Yeah. Yeah. And it was still... Right. Exactly the same. <laughs> it was a little less smoky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Just like... It's a little less smoky in all those clubs, you know. Yeah. 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 Well, it sounds like when you're talking about all this, like you really have some happy memories. Hmm? Yeah, it's been fantastic. You know, seeing travel all over the world and get to play with all these heroes of mine. Yeah. And it all started with that record back in the library. It all, yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah, it's been amazing. I've it's much more than I mean. I, I never thought I'd play with Harmon, who was a, he was one of the first guys I listened to. One of the uh, uh, of the contemporary players uh-huh. that I listened right. to, and it completely changed my. I mean, I thought I knew now what blues is, you know, but when I heard him, it was contemporary, and it, I was looking at the cover, and it was just young guys, you know, my age, well, a bit older, and I thought that was amazing, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah so when going I, on right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, the music was more, you know, swinging and a little more up-tempo and... You know, it's just, it wasn't as heavy as this old Chicago blues. And the guitar players was just, you know, wow. The guitar players on these records, especially Junior Watson, he blew me away. He still does every time. <laughs> yeah, to get to play with him was just, and become really good friends because he uh, he used to tour over here a couple, at least a couple of times a year for 10 years, maybe. So I must have done hundreds of shows with, with Harmon. That's wonderful. And became really good friends. Yeah. Yeah. It's my parents' generation that comes out to hear the shows, you know, which is great. I mean, I love the fact that they're going out to listen to live music, but I miss a younger crowd. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I have to pull them in yeah. again. Is there any uh, thoughts for your fans? I know there's guitar players out there that follow you, are um, people and rock and roll fans, you know, who love the Kokomo Kings and you know, people who followed you over the years. Anything you'd like to say? Uh, go out and hear live music again as much as you can. <laughs> good, good advice. It's it's, it's been uh, it's been two long years, and uh, it really needs a, a boost. I really hope it comes back stronger than ever. I hope it's going to be a party from now on. <laughs> yeah, we're all ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for joining so, us today. It's been a pleasure to hear your stories. Um, uh, and I'll think about you in that library, listening to that record and falling yeah, asleep it's going. to it. Your <laughs> original inspiration. So yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a great blues well, story. thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure.
This has been No Border Blues with Johnny Bergen and Stephanie Tice. 